from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering Cloud Foundry Summit 2018. Brought to you by the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Welcome back to theCUBE, I'm Stu Miniman and this is Cloud Foundry Summit 2018 in Boston. Uh, talking a lot about digital transformation, love when we get to talk to, to the users here at the show. Uh, one of the great uh, stories told on the keynote stage this morning was from T-Mobile. Uh, so while Rob wasn't on the stage, he, he's, he's involved in the activity. This is Rob Hansen, he's Director of Operations at T-Mobile. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. So, Rob, uh, you know, it was, uh, we were talking beforehand. You know, the Twitters, there's lots of stuff that goes on, but everybody, mm -hmm. you know, it was a great story talking about 1,700 developers and only 10 operators uh, underneath yeah. making those work. So maybe before we get into it, tell us a little bit about, you know, your role, uh, your background, what, what you do at T-Mobile. Sure, so uh, my role is I, I lead a team uh, on the operations side. So we operate the software. And uh, you know, when we look over the last 10 years or so, you know, that software has been predominantly large monoliths. Um, look at, uh, use TIPCO as an example. We've been a heavy user of TIPCO BW for many, many years. Uh, and uh, my environment supporting TIPCO BW accounts for about 2,000 physical servers um, across multiple data centers and you know that, that carries a high operational cost. We're doing all our changes in the middle of the night. Uh, things break uh, seeming randomly uh, at times causing customer impact. So just a, a lot of pain in patching. One of my favorite topics is patching. <laughs> Uh, oh you know, boy, Tuesday's your favorite day of the week, right? Oh my it's God. It's Taco Tuesday and Patch Tuesday. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, every, uh, every quarter I get the list of uh, servers. Here's the list of servers that needs to be patched and it's just uh, a nightmare, yeah. right? So, so Rob, can we talk a little bit about kind of the developer and operator interaction yeah. at your company? I interviewed Solomon Hikes last year at DockerCon, mm -hmm. and he said, believe it or not, I created Docker mostly for the operators. That's his background in oh, there, yeah. but everybody, you know, at this show, it's, uh, you, know, uh, you know, it's developers, developers, developers. So, you know, what's that dynamic inside T-Mobile? So, you know, historically, uh, before we got into kind of the cloud native space, um, it was really an us versus them, right? There's that mentality of, uh, oh, it's an ops problem now. Uh, there's a great meme out there, it's one of my favorite, the little girl standing in front of the burning house and it says, worked in dev, it's an ops problem now. <laughs> uh, so as, as we've gone through this cloud native journey and we've moved into uh, using like Pivotal uh, within our environment, we've seen the, that community within our organization come together. Uh, and really start working closer and closer together. And as, you know, right now we're going through um, a migration into the TIPCO Container Edition project or uh, application. And as we've been doing that, uh, we literally have our ops-based folks and the development-based folks sitting in a room together day and night, uh, just working together. And, and you know, historically, developers have a point of view, operators have a different point of view. It's really brought them together into a singular point of view um, and ownership of the software and uh, just providing business capabilities. Yeah. Rob, c could you give us a little bit of picture, kind of your application portfolio? How much sure. have you been kind of moving onto the platforms? How much do you build new on the platform? Those kind of yeah, things. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, legacy, we were about 2,000 physical servers. Uh, right now, I'm trying to remember the actual uh, application count, but um, I've taken, or, or we've taken uh, one of our historical job applications, moved it completely into PCF, um, running uh, complete uh, Spring Boot uh, now. We're doing that with our TIPCO environment. Um, we have a number of other applications that we've spun up. Um, running in, in spring and whatnot. And what we've been able to do is, is just explode uh, the amount of stuff we're deploying and just new functionality. We're able to develop it much faster. Um, and so when we look at like the, the developers, more people are coming on board because you can, you can just get the code out there so much faster and really in smaller increments. So a lot of times when we've developed things and we've delivered functionality for the business. Because you're dealing with large monoliths, you have to change, you know, uh, one of the applications I, I mentioned, you know, you've got 200 uh, services, about 600 operations bundled into the same ball of code. 
uh, now we've separated that out into a bunch of microservices. So now we can just uh, implement this one thing um, with very little to no impact to the business. And I think one of the big fundamental shifts that we've seen, um, you know, we've, we have historically done the large Saturday night deployments, right? You show up Saturday night at 7 p.m. and you hope you get to go home Sunday. Uh, and we've really shifted that model. So in Q1, in MySpace, uh, we did 86.5% of our changes in production during the day, right in the middle of the business day. Um, Is that scary? It was at first, uh, in all honesty, because you know I, my biggest fear is having to explain things to leadership. You know, why did it go wrong? The root cause and all that kind of stuff. But, um, but because we're able to move so fast now, we're able to get the code out there. We're able to see, okay, is this working? Roll it back really quickly, leveraging blue green. Um, scale is another thing. You know, every every year, iPhone iPhone is a scary time, I think, for pretty much any wireless operator. Um, and historically, we've had to go out and buy more physical servers. And so, you know, you're buying these servers, you're building them, it takes months to build them, stand them up, and you're doing that for a two-day event a year. And you end up carrying the costs of that hardware. Well, this last iPhone uh, in September, you know, the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10. Uh, because we were predominantly running in uh, our cloud native environment and our cloud foundry environment, um, spun up the containers. Yeah. And is that does that live in a public cloud or? Uh, that lives in a private cloud okay. on prem. So we we just spun up the uh, containers, got through the event, spun them down. Okay, so you, you had enough infrastructure capacity. You just didn't, needed to be kind of yeah. You know. Well, and, and be, we're able to we're able to target the specific services right in in uh, in our Tibco landscape. We operate uh, in the old BW environment, we operate about 200 years, comes out to about 1,400 services. Um, so you're, you know, when you're scaling up, you're having to do it more or less for everything. But in the, uh, running in the pivotal environment, we're able to just target, okay, this, you know, like a get customer info. It's like a basic call when you log into MyTMO. You're able to just take that, double it, triple it, whatever you need to do. Maybe this other call over here, you know, we don't have to touch that. So you're just being way more efficient with uh, your resources. So Rob, if you can do these updates all the time, do you still love patching as much as you used to? I, uh, the patching is the devil. Um, I actually, the, the, the 10 to 15 people that Chuck was talking about uh, on stage today, you know, those are the guys who actually operate the uh, physical hardware, you know, the Diego cells and whatnot. Um, I meet with them on a weekly basis and we kind of go through the state of things and, and planning and all that kind of stuff. And uh, almost every time I end that meeting with, um, I just don't want to patch anything uh, anymore. So uh, the more we get onto the, this environment, you know, the easier it is for me. And, and as we're trying to do this DevOps transformation um, at T-Mobile, you know, we're, we're getting there and we're doing it. Uh, but you know, one of the things we ask ourselves is, should a DevOps team have to care about patching, right? Do, who, who's, why, why is a developer going to say, oh, my OS is a version behind, I need to take care of that? That's, that's not useful to the business, right? That, that takes away uh, time that that developer can be creating new things and adding value. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the. If you think about, you know, in a public cloud environment, I don't think about that. You know, what version of Azure are you running isn't something that people ask. Yeah. Um, private cloud, if it's going to live up to what we want it to, mm -hmm. it should have a similar uh, type of dynamic. Exactly, and, and our platform team is amazing. I mean, they take care of that stuff for us. Um, and I'm, I'm a heavy user, so, you know, uh, I think Chuck talked about this a little. Um, he didn't really talk about the volume, but, you know, we started, we started on our, our on our pivotal journey a couple years ago. I think uh, you know first started dabbling 2015, but we really didn't start uh, converting our large monolithic middleware until the beginning of 2017. Um, so right now we are doing 250 million transactions a day on our uh, pivotal platform, just with two, or I'm uh, sorry, three of my uh, platforms running in there. Yeah. 
my last thing I want to ask you, Rob, what, what key learnings have you had going through this transformation? What do you say to your peers that you know they, they could do better or look out for or plan uh, to, to, to help them? You know, I, th I think uh, the, the main learning that we've had is just how important it is to partner together with the hardware people, the developers and the operations people. Um, coming together, you know, it, it, it's a cultural shift in many respects and, um, you know, like they say in DevOps, uh, a lot of people talk about it, they don't realize how hard it is to do, but hardware has to be a part of that. So, you know, coming together, luckily we had a couple stumblings in the beginning, um, but we were quickly able to huddle together between uh, these kind of three core groups. Uh, and really work together and overcome those challenges. And you know, the, the, I think the second thing that's really important is just to be open and honest with each, with each other. Um, everybody makes mistakes. I think a lot of times there's uh, cases of, oh, this is a platform problem, oh, it's a software problem. Um, you know, there's a little finger pointing here and there uh, from time to time, but getting, uh, getting through that, being open, honest, communicative uh, with each other, it, it just makes the world so much easier and better for us. Yeah, well, Rob, my, my entire IT c career, it's, uh, you know, we've wanted everybody to hold hands and get in a circle <laughs> together, bust through those silos. So, uh, you know, making progress though, thank you so much for, for sharing the story of, of T-Mobile. Lots more coverage here from the Cloud Foundry Summit here in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm Stu Miniman, you're watching theCUBE. Oh, <laughs>